Welcome to Watch Mike Hike. I am Mike and today we're going to take a look at a new tent for spring of 2017. The Sierra Designs High Route 1 FL or the High Route 1, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, this is part of the Skirka series from Sierra Designs, equipment that was designed with the input of a uh, hiker named Andrew Skirka who's hiked many more miles than most of us will ever dream of. Uh, this is definitely a really cool tent. Uh, it is a non-freestanding tent, which means it does have to be staked out to stand up. If it's not staked out, it falls over. Uh, you do have to have some sort of poles to hold it up, trekking poles, or you can get the accessory poles available from Sierra Designs. I believe it's the 50-inch poles that will fit this. Uh, but you have to have poles because it doesn't come with any. So uh, the packaged weight on this is, according to Sierra's, Sierra Designs, 2 pounds and 12 ounces. On my scale, it's 2 pounds, 8 and 7 eighths ounces. That does include the stuff sacks and the stakes and everything in there because, well, you have to have the stakes to set it up. If you just want to use the Rainfly, which makes a good two-person tent, weighs in at 1 pound and 6 ounces. If you just want to use the tent body, the just the bug netting part of it, you're at 14 and a quarter ounces. And then the stakes uh, with the bag are 3 and a quarter ounces. And it also comes with the uh, Night Glow Lantern from Sierra Designs, uh, which weighs in at 5 eight, 5 eighths of an ounce. Uh, we'll throw that in the tent later and I'll show you how that works. Uh, it comes with eight of these right angled DAC uh, stakes. They, they have a little bit of weight to them, so I usually don't use the stakes that come with tents. And like uh, in this video, I'll be using the MSR Carbon Core stakes just because they are lighter. So when you see me staking down the tent, that's what I'm using. Uh, we are, are going to set up the tent with the rain fly and the tent body already attached inside of it. It's a great feature that you can set it up that way so if it is raining, your tent body stays dry and it makes setup quick and easy. And then we'll also set it up with just the tent body, just the bug net part of it. I'll show you the, the part of that that I, the one part that I didn't like about the tent. Um, it's just the kind of the configuration that you would have to, I guess, do to get the, the rain fly on it if it started raining or something. Uh, currently, there is not a footprint or a you know a ground cloth part um, for this tent available from Sierra Designs, so you will need to just make a piece of Tyvek or a piece of plastic or something to put under it if you choose to uh, do that. It has, it has a 30D um, ripstop nylon floor material on the bottom of the tent, so it is thicker, it is more durable. Uh, so unless you're really rough on tents or you're putting it down in some really nasty stuff, um, you probably don't need a footprint, but I do choose to use one most of the time. So let's get this thing set up. I'm going to set it up first, again, with the tent body and the rain fly inside of it. The setup would be the same if I was just doing uh, the, the uh, rain fly part by itself. So let's get this thing up. It's extremely easy to set up. I already got my Tyvek laid out. All you have to do is spread it out. Uh, it's a big rectangle. Stake out the four corners, and you're going to take your, you just open up the door, take the trekking pole, put it in there. There's a little pocket there in the top that the top of the handle goes into. You stake it out, do that on both sides, and your tent's up. I do already have the tent body hooked up inside of the rain fly here, so even if it is raining, my tent body's going to stay nice and dry. So, let's pop it up. Alright, so there's the four corners. That was quick and easy enough. Now all you're going to do is unzip the door. It is easier to have the buckle clipped at the bottom. I'll show you that buckle here in a second. Uh, leave that clipped, zip the, the uh, door up, stick your handle in there, and extend it to make all that fabric and everything there nice and tight. And zip the door back up, guy it out, and your tent's done. The tent does have two doors and two vestibules, one on each side. Not something you really need on a one-person tent, but it is nice because you can really open everything up, uh, get a lot of cross ventilation, and then if you're using the tarp or just the rainfly part of it as a tarp for two people, that works out great. So on both sides, you have this uh, flap here right at the top of the door that you can pull the, the little stiffener out right here and open up the awning to be able to get some ventilation through the mesh right there. If you do have heavy winds and stuff, there are a lot of features on this tent that will help you um, bear those winds. First, you've got a guy out point here that you can guy this out. You do notice the, the wall here is, is pretty much flat, so it will take some 
um, wind pushing on that. Coming around to the little line locks here on all four corners. You can pull on these easy enough without having to try to adjust the stake or anything. Uh, you can pull and get all the fabric and everything on the tent nice and tight. Same as the guy line coming off the peak right there. I do find that it's easy, or I guess better, if your line is coming off uh, at an angle here with the, the uh, peak line or the roof line there. Uh, one, it gets it out of the way of the door and then just puts better tension up across uh, that, that line. And then you've got a, a line tensioner on here, which makes tensioning that up really easily. I'm going to switch around to the other side. What I've done is part of the vestibule that opens up, if it's not raining like super hard with heavy winds and everything, you can basically take this and open this up. One, it's going to get you more ventilation. Two, it's still going to keep you dry and it's going to give you a lot of room right there to um, you know, be able to cook and everything and still have plenty of ventilation. So what you want to do is right on the inside, and I'll show you more back on the other side, but there's uh, several clips here right on the inside. One, if it's windy, it helps secure this whole flat side against some wind, but it also makes it so that you can help secure this to be able to guy it out like this. So as it comes down, having that clip there takes the stress off of that zipper, so it's not just pulling on that. And then if it's, um, what you could do is even open this all the way, unclip that, and just come down and kind of tension that up a little bit more. And you can see how much that opens that up. I mean, that's even enough to crawl inside of. But you could leave it like that, you know, unless the wind was blowing from this direction, obviously. But if that's the case, you can open up the other side. All right, let's take a look inside and check out some of those features. As we're going in, I've got the rain fly rolled back, the door rolled back. And if I did the same thing on the other side, you can kind of see how that's already open, but you can see what kind of cross ventilation you would get coming through here. All right, as we look inside, where the pole and the, the fabric here meet, there are several Velcro attachments and stuff that you can attach around the pole here. And like I showed you just on the other side, that clip that's there, you can clip that up with the other side of the door here and help support the, the fabric against the wind. Another Velcro clip further up. And all the way at the top, you can see the pocket up there where the top of the handle sits. And there's another Velcro tab up here that will help secure it. Uh, the yellow line here is what the tent body or how the tent body is attaching to the top of the rain fly. And then out on the corners here, you can see the tent body is basically just attached to the rain fly with some cord and a little plastic clip out there on the end of it. It's a easy effective system that gets used on uh, some more ultralight style tents. You've got two pockets in here, one on each side, identical uh, just with the placement of the door. You have an attachment point up top here where I just ran a line or you can also run the, the night glow lantern. And that is the inside of the tent. You can see there's not a whole lot of like vestibule room here. Like I've got a, a hands width here. You can also kick this out just a little bit and even open that up more. It's not a lot. Um, coming away from the tent, but it's the whole length of the tent all the way down. So when this gets, I got the door rolled back here. But you've got a ton of room all the way down, and you've got it on both sides. And if we open up the other side where we've got the the uh, rain fly pulled out, I mean this is feet and feet out here of just space. So you could be sitting here cooking and stuff even in the rain uh, without you know, interfering with the rain fly or having that carbon monoxide build up in here. Alright, so let's uh, set just the tent body up without the rain fly. But before we set that up, I'm going to show you this night glow lantern before I forget. Let's see if we can do this like this. Alright, so the night glow lantern hangs from the line here. Over on this side, there's a, a line tensioner so you can put tension on it and get it up against the top of your tent. The gray part, the top part here, has a, a little bit of a foam stiffener in it. Also has the channel here that the line runs through so you can move this back and forth across the line wherever you want it. Uh, it's just a bungee cord with a uh, barrel lock here on the end of it. And all you do is take your headlamp, turn your headlamp on, stick it up in here and it shines off the, the white material on top of it. Cinch it shut. And well, you can tuck all this up there if you want to. 
And now you have a lantern that diffuses the light and just kind of gives that nice even light across your whole tent. That is the Night Glow Lantern from Sierra Designs. It's, uh, it comes with several of their tents, including this one, and you can buy it as an accessory too. All right, let's set up the tent body. So if you're not expecting rain, but you still want protection from the bugs, you can set up just the tent body. Uh, setup's gonna be the same thing as it was with the, the whole rain fly and everything, where you stake out the four corners and you put the poles in, except this time the poles go this way. So let's set it up real quick. So as you can see, it's very easy to put up. Uh, I'm going to throw a sleeping pad in here and show you how much room you've got once you're inside of it. And in this configuration, like I said, this is very easy to put up. What it is hard to do is go from this configuration to, let's say it starts raining and you want to put the rain fly on. Uh, it's, it's almost harder to put the rain fly on this configuration than it is to just put the whole rain fly in, the tent body and everything up together. And I'm going to show you why. Well, you can see in this configuration, all you're doing is putting the trekking pole through this loop of uh, nylon webbing here to hold it up. And then, of course, you've got your four corners staked out. So the difficult part comes in when you want to put your rain fly on. Both of these poles have to be turned the other way. You can't have the pointy end up facing into the rain fly. It'll put a hole right through it. So essentially, you're going to have to unstake this or at least take the tension off of it and drop both corners of the tent essentially while well, dropping your entire tent down you throw the rain fly over top and then you can turn your poles over put them up through the rain fly and then start to stake it out but then you also have the issue down here on the corner so we're just staked out through the loop here you've got the little hook that gets hooked to the underside of the rain fly and the stake won't stay here. It'll actually get attached to the line that's um, connected to the rain fly to be able to pull it out. So not only do you have to take the, the poles, flip them over, basically dropping your entire tent, and then coming out and attaching these four points to the four corners, pulling your stakes, and staking those all the way out um, on the rain fly. All in all, it's probably one of the most difficult rain flies to put on on any tent. But the way I prefer to use the tent is with the rain fly always on it and then um, just rolling up the sides because you get tons of ventilation and uh, cross flow because like I said you've got your two doors uh, one on each side and the, the rain fly has the same thing so uh, yeah it's just a pain in the butt so I have a regular size sleeping pad in here so you can see how much room there is I think we're all the way you know we're pretty much all the way down to the, the foot end here this is a regular size pad uh, it will accommodate a large pad in here. I pushed it all the way to one end just so you could see how much room you would have on that side. But if you center it up, it gives you plenty of room on each side. Now, what you do have to look for is how steep the sidewall is right here. So when you're laying down and you go to sit up, um, you know, I, I miss it. But depending on how far you are pushed all the way to one end, you know, the end of your sleeping bag or, you know, your head might hit the side of the mesh netting and everything here when you set up but i have plenty of room in here to be able to lay down even stretch out i still you know i still have a hand's worth of clearance here as i'm i'm sitting up and laying down and easy enough to stretch out and plenty of room on the sides and as you saw earlier the vestibule room so you got uh, plenty of room to spread your stuff out here i like it pretty much never use it in this configuration but the the tent overall i really think it's cool I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Sierra Designs High Route 1 FL, new for spring of 2017. If you like the video, please subscribe. And uh, I've got plenty of videos coming out and plenty of other ones that I've already made. So check it out. Please subscribe. Thank you for watching Watch My Kike. See you on the trail. Bye.